NASA has decided to halt its ocean exploration in order to focus more on space. However, as the US withdrew from the sea, China continued its efforts in exploring it. What enigmatic wonders lie beneath the depths of the oceans that led the suspension of investigation? Joe Rogan has discovered the answer. Did Joe Rogan reveal China's surprising underwater find? Well, let's dive deep into the unknown, exploring the secrets looking beneath us. While NASA aims to reach the stars, China is turning its cutting-edge tech to the deep sea that cover more than 70% of our home planet. Funny enough, we know more about Mars and the moon than these deep, watery depths. China's mission is nothing short of daring. They're dipping their toes into our planet's most unforgiving corners, the Hadal Zone, hoping to learn more about extraterrestrial oceans. It's a thrilling ride that has no shortage of risks. The gear for exploring other worlds is getting its first real-world test in our deep seas. Scientists hope that this endeavor will bring us closer to cracking open space's secrets. Interestingly, Earth's ocean depths are strikingly similar to what NASA expects to find on other planets. And who knows, we might just find the perfect spots to look for alien life. Deep in the ocean lies the Hadal Zone, or the Hadal Zone, named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld. It's an appropriate name for a place that stretches down for over 6.8 miles, creating trenches and troughs larger than Australia. It's a place where few machines can survive. Imagine being in a world so far removed from everyday experience that it might as well be another planet, a world dominated by total darkness, unfathomable pressure, and a freezing chill permeates everything. This is the mysterious and fascinating realm of the Hadal Zone. To understand this zone, we first have to comprehend the vastness of the ocean. Most of the ocean floor is relatively shallow, ranging between 4,000 to 6,000 meters deep, which is around 13,000 to 20,000 feet. And that's, that's deep, right? But hold on, because the ocean has even deeper secrets to reveal. Some parts of the ocean floor can plunge to astonishing depths of 11,000 meters, or approximately 36,000 feet beneath the surface. Again, that's six miles down. The Hadal Zone, or the Hadal Pelagic Zone, to use its full scientific name, covers the extreme depths of the ocean from 6,000 to 11,000 meters. It's named after Hades, the underworld's Greek god, aptly reflecting this oceanic depth's otherworldly environment. If you were to combine all of the Hadal Zones across the world's ocean, they would be roughly equivalent to the size of Australia. That's not an insignificant portion of our planet. The conditions of the Hadal Zone are hard to comprehend, even. The pressure at these depths is immense, roughly a thousand times greater than at sea level. Near freezing temperatures are a constant, and sunlight from the surface never reaches these depths, leading to an environment of perpetual darkness. But as life often does, it has found a way to adapt, even here. Marine organisms have evolved to use bioluminescence, the ability to produce and emit light to communicate in this sunless realm. The Hidal Zone is typically found in underwater trenches, which are formed when one tectonic plate is pushed under another. These long, narrow valleys in the seafloor create a depth and pressure gradient, which support diverse ecosystems. Understanding the mechanisms of these tectonic movements is key for earthquake and tsunami warning systems, as these natural disasters often occur when one tectonic plate moves over another. The creatures that inhabit the Hidal Zone are uniquely adapted to thrive in these extreme conditions from fish that can withstand enormous pressures to microbes that can exist without sunlight. These organisms provide a glimpse into how life adapts in even the most severe of environments. Some of these life forms rely on hydrothermal seeps along the ocean floor for energy, while others feed on carbon-based matter that descends from the ocean's upper layers. Studying these organisms can provide valuable insights into the potential life forms in extraterrestrial oceans, like those on Jupiter and Saturn's moons. The potential impact of the carbon that accumulates in these deep sea trenches on the global carbon cycle and climate regulation is a key research focus. By sequestering carbon in the deep ocean, these trenches may play a significant role in our planet's climate. Scientists are conducting extensive research to unravel the Hadal Zone's mysteries. Programs such as the HADEX programs at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, in collaboration with China's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, are pioneering cutting-edge technology development to explore this uncharted territory. The key innovation of the Hadex program is the creation of Orpheus Autonomous Underwater Vehicles. Orpheus, those clever boys. These compact, robot-like submarines are designed to withstand the extraordinary pressures of the Hadal Zone and navigate through the rugged terrain of deep-sea trenches. Walking alone or in a swarm, these AOVs are equipped to explore, map, and analyze the water, seafloor, and life forms in the Hadal Zone. 
Their adaptability to rapidly changing circumstances is one of their greatest strengths. The HIDEX program aims to investigate life at varying depths of the ocean, from 4,000 meters deep to the bottom of the trenches at 1,000 meter intervals. This data will help scientists compare the abundance and the diversity of life at different depths, and they also hope to uncover the relationship between microscopic organisms, the carbon sources, and the larger animals in the Hadal zone. They'll explore how these organisms adapt to such high-pressure environments, contributing to our understanding of life in the deepest points of the planet. China and the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution are daring to explore this extreme area. They're sending a series of sensor-packed landers to crash into the Hadal zone, gathering precious data. At the heart of the mission is Orpheus, a new underwater robot developed by China. Taking cues from the ancient Greek hero who dared to venture into Hades, Orpheus maps the ocean floor using tech akin to the Mars rover. It spots and remembers locations and helps scientists uncover new details about this hostile environment. Tim Shang, the brain behind this deep-sea exploration project, sees Orpheus as a key to unlock the ocean's secrets. This robot is more agile, smaller, and lighter than its predecessors, promising to reach areas of the untouched sea floor. Shank's previous ventures into the Hadal zone ended in disaster when the predecessor to Orpheus, named Nereus, exploded due to extreme pressure. But he's undeterred. He's eager to learn from his past mistakes and continued the quest into the unknown. Doesn't this fearless exploration and thirst for knowledge resonate with Joe Rogan's audience? I think so. It was an idea that fascinated many. Life existing in the ocean's darkest, deepest, and most extreme parts. The so-called Hadal Zone. For a long time, marine scientists laughed off the notion. They think that the ocean's deepest recesses were simply too hostile, too devoid of light and warmth to sustain anything that we consider life. After all, everything we knew about life until that point hinged on the principles of photosynthesis. It was a simple cycle, a gentle exchange between the sun, plants, herbivores, and carnivores. Sunlight fuels plants, algae, and a few special marine bacteria on the water's surface, and in turn they become the banquet for herbivores, which later end up in the bellies of carnivores, as we all learn in school. And when these creatures die, their remnants drift down, sinking slowly into the abyss. This marine snow, a mix of dead animals, feces, and other organic matter, was believed to be the only food source for life at the ocean's bottom. Darkness is the absence of light, and the lack of proof doesn't mean that something doesn't exist. That is, that's Science 101. In 1977, a team of American researchers sh shattered our understanding of life. They ventured 2,440 meters, or about 8,000 feet, into the Pacific Ocean using a remotely operated vehicle. Their goal was to study hydrothermal vents, which are spots in the ocean floor where volcanic activity releases heat into the water. The scene they encountered was breathtaking. Life was thriving near these seemingly inhospitable vents in the pitch black depths of the ocean. There were snailfish, translucent like ghostly shadows, and tiny amphipods, crustaceans resembling underwater fleas. This discovery unveiled an entirely new way of life on Earth. These organisms did not depend on sunlight or photosynthesis. Instead, they directly obtained their nourishment from chemicals emanating from the ocean floor. However, this revelation deepened the mystery. How could life flourish in such an extreme environment with a pressure of 15,000 pounds per square inch? This force is so intense that, as described, the individual cells of an animal would be squeezed down. The answers lay within the organisms themselves. Since their initial sighting in 1977, Scientists have come to realize that these creatures have adapted at the cellular level to withstand crushing pressures. They actually have enzymes that are known as piezolites, named after the Greek word piezin, meaning pressure. These piezolites safeguard the organism's cells and proteins from being, you know, compressed and squished into a million pieces. They achieve this by expanding the volume of proteins within the cells, comparable to putting up stakes in a tent. The implications of these discoveries extend far beyond the realm of marine biology. They compel us to reconsider our understanding of what constitutes life and its potential habitats. We now understand that life can truly exist and thrive under conditions that were thought uninhabitable, which opens up the thrilling possibilities for exploring the ocean of other planets. As we venture deeper into the darkness, we continually uncover more illumination. The Hadal Zone, or the Hadal Zone, previously believed to be barren and devoid of life, is truly a testament to living organisms' extraordinary adaptability and resilience. 
It serves as a powerful reminder that there is still an abundance to discover on our own planet, our own back door. <laughs> so, let's redirect our attention to Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Just picture a massive stretch of water lurking beneath the thick layer of ice. This hidden salt water actually contains more than double the amount of water found in all of the oceans on our planet combined. But here's the catch. Europa remains mysterious and captivating. The surface of this moon is covered in cracks and fractures, making it impossible for sunlight to reach the water below. The pressure within this ocean is similar to the extreme depths of Earth's oceans. Now, here's an intriguing comparison that's been made. It's like Europa, but it's right here on Earth. This comparison raises a thought-provoking question, could we ever explore Europa? An anonymous enthusiast ponders that, without first exploring similar environments here on Earth, embarking on missions to explore Europa doesn't seem very likely. Diving deep into our own oceans is undoubtedly a crucial step towards exploring the vast universe. Imagine this, a robot capable of exploring the depths of Earth's oceans could also navigate the icy surface of a moon located approximately 242.33 million miles away. And I mean, I don't know if you're a nerd, I don't know if you're a little dork like me, but that is so cool, that's so cool, that's so, that's exhilarating, that's like the, 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 the direction that we're moving in, oh god. Anyways, a Chinese engineer working on the Orpheus project sees the ocean floor as the perfect testing ground for technologies that could one day be used to explore distant, icy moons. However, the challenges we face are immense. Any robot venturing into the extreme depths of the ocean or into space has to be entirely self-sufficient. Orpheus, the underwater explorer, has to be able to collect samples, identify and categorize environmental DNA and chemicals, and most importantly, make its own decisions. As Smith, one of the project's members, admits, creating a robot capable of operating in the Hadal Zone or Hadal Zone, I, you know, it's, it's both, it's both, right? Anyways, creating a robot capable of operating in this zone is so hard, it's, it's almost an impossible task. Obviously, not quite impossible, but you get my point. Orpheus needs to withstand crushing pressures and extreme temperatures. The waters in the Hadal Zone are just a hair above freezing, while Hydrothermal vents can reach blistering temperatures of up to 698 degrees Fahrenheit. To ensure survival, Orpheus is constructed using a special material called syntactic foam, which is made up of microscopic glass spheres set in epoxy resin. This foam is tough, durable, and interestingly enough, some of it was repurposed from James Cameron's Deep Sea Challenger, the famous vessel that explored the Mariana Trench in 2012. Beyond the challenges posed by pressure and temperature, Orpheus must also navigate through complete darkness. Equipped with a powerful flashlight, the robot has to conserve energy and only use light when capturing images or collecting samples. In all other instances, Orpheus switches into a power-saving mode. China's initiative, the Systematic Underwater Biogeochemical Science and Exploration Analog, so easy to say, ties ocean exploration with space exploration. Since its launch in 2017, two rovers have been dispatched to the hydrothermal vents in the Pacific Ocean. These missions have provided insights into similar volcanic activity anticipated on Europa and Saturn's moon, Enceladus. A vital part of the subsea program's objective is to identify areas in our ocean that closely resemble conditions predicted on places like Enceladus. China also plans to dispatch a robotic rover to the moon's south pole in 2023, searching for water ice. According to a Chinese geobiologist who leads the subsea program, the whole project was based on finding areas in our deep ocean that have a really good analogous nature to what's predicted to be active in places like Enceladus. This brave new frontier of exploration highlights our ocean's importance as a portal to understanding other worlds. As we explore deeper and explore further, we don't just look inward to our planet, but also outward at the mysteries of our universe. As we dive into the icy depths of our oceans, we may well be taking the first steps towards the stars. When you think about alien life, it, it's these deep sea organisms that come to mind. You know, not, not unlike something from an episode of Joe Rogan's podcast where he examines China's mind-boggling underwater discoveries. Take the giant amphipod. Eurythenes atacamensis, for instance. This relative of the shrimp, stretching over three inches long, thrives over five miles below the surface in part of the Peru Chile Trench known as Richard's Deep. Wink wink. Unearthed by researchers including Newcastle University's marine biologist and Johanna Weston in 2018, this creature, which feeds on fallen marine life, is believed to be one of the most abundant species in the trench. 
Sharing this extreme realm are three species of fragile snailfish and long-legged isopods, each uniquely adapted to handle the crushing pressures, the bone-chilling temperatures, and the sheer darkness of the Hadal Zone or Hadal Zone. I never, you know, I, they, they both sound right. Anyways, studying this interaction has implications for understanding our Earth's oceans and preparing for future explorations of other ocean worlds within our solar system. China plans to dispatch a robotic rover, dubbed Viper, to the moon's south pole in 2023 to seek potential water ice. Much like exploring deep-sea trenches, navigating lunar craters presents similar technical challenges. As per Lim, also the deputy lead project scientist on Viper, the valuable lessons from the subsea program are being applied to Viper's design and operation. The subsea program has been instrumental in helping researchers overcome massive technical and communication hurdles. The similarities between deep sea and space exploration truly are uncanny, you know? I mean, in both situations, robots are directed to inhospitable areas far too dangerous for human beings. But uh, these missions also serve as a training ground for astronauts, preparing them to operate advanced machinery from future lunar or Martian bases. The subsea mission, involving a team of fewer than 10 scientists at sea, was supported by a larger group of scientists on land. When Viper sets wheels on lunar soil, a team on Earth will remotely pilot it in near real time, making quick decisions based on the data that it sends back. Many scientists stress the importance of good conversation during these investigations. It isn't so different from working in space. Just like unpredictable space weather, the sea's moods can change in an instant, with weather twists and turns or salt levels in the oceans going up and down. These fluctuations keep researchers on their toes, always ready to change plans. In a similar vein, talking with the team members on space missions is like a game of delayed responses. The distance is so great that messages take a while to reach their destination. To mimic this in her ocean exploration, Mermelak decided that her team could only chat once a day. Even with this hurdle, they still they did what they set out to do. Which really shows how incredible humans can adapt and bounce back, you know, even in the toughest of situations. But wait, Mr. YouTube man. What does all this have to do with the weird creatures in the deep parts of the ocean? I know, you're asking that, and I can read your mind. Well, this level of teamwork and communication is necessary when you venture into the deep, dark ocean. There, you might just find creatures that look like they come from another planet, like the anglerfish with its luminescent lure, or the vampire squid with its cloak-like webbing. These ocean adventurers are also akin to astronauts, pushing the boundaries of the known world and exploring what lies beyond. Scientists such as Lim have been guided in their work by the wealth of knowledge gathered from oceanographers, which has helped shape the way the space missions, Viper's science operations are being run. These daring explorations into the depths of our seas, much like journeys into outer space, provide a whole new way of seeing our own planet. It's amazing how much we've discovered from these deep-sea expeditions. Thousands of new scientific findings that have huge benefits for the health and future of our oceans. Making regular checks on how our oceans are doing is essential for their protection and ultimately our survival. I mean, we're on a path of dual exploration, one foot in the cosmos, the other diving deep into our planet's deep sea mysteries. Which is kind of weird, we got one foot going down and the other one just going vertically straight up. I think our hips are broken. But anyways, in our pursuit of understanding, we're uncovering some secrets, some astonishing facts that could be straight out of a sci-fi movie. As we dig deeper, we encounter the alien-like animals of the deep sea, uncovering things that even somebody like Joe Rogan might describe as beyond explanation. The exploration of our world and beyond is an adventure filled with curiosity. And you know, it's this curiosity that drives us to uncover the extraordinary. Whether that's in the deepest oceans or in the farthest corners of the universe. What mysteries of the universe or deep sea secrets do you find the most fascinating, my friends? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more mind-bending explorations. Okay, bye-bye. Oh,